Hey guys, it's Liddy here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make these super nice and fancy coasters for around the house, handmade by me. So, let's get started. Alright, so, yes, I have finally gotten into a little bit more woodworking from cutting boards and uh, signs. I've decided to start making these little coasters. They look super, super nice, and I've actually started selling them on my Etsy store. I finally opened one up, and so that will be linked down below in the description if you want to buy anything that I make. Some of my products are... But I just wanted to show you guys how I made these. Um, a super simple video, so let's get right into it. Alright, so starting off, I just chose a piece of wood. I believe this was about six six inches six and a half so I decided I was going to do three by three wood so I just set the table saw up to cut that and um, make sure you have push stick if you do this to keep your fingers away from the blade um, I decided on three by three just because that's the kind of or the width I had for the wood um, but I definitely recommend going at least three and a half or four inches just to make them a little wider and then I decided I wanted to split it again so I think I measured maybe one and a half or one and a quarter um, just so that the two pieces of walnut would be a little bit different in size and again make sure you use your push sticks to keep your fingers safe and I just did this for both sides next I just wanted to make sure that everything was clean and all the edges were cleaned up um, and then I was going to add a piece of a maple I actually add two pieces of maple um, but I just used my joiner here to clean up all the sides so everything was flush and there was no burn marks on anything. And then I used my uh, planer here to plane down the piece of maple to the right thickness because I wanted the coasters to be squared. So I had to bring them down just a little bit so that I could get a an even 3x3 three three size coaster. And then I uh, found a piece of walnut which would go in the middle of those two strips of maple and then also plane that down so that it was the right thickness. Next I trimmed off the edges or the ends of the walnut and the maple so that I could get away or get rid of the sniped ends that weren't straight completely um, and then I just measured the length that I needed for each piece so that I had to make sure I had enough wood plane down for both sets of the coasters. And then I went again and did that with the walnut which I only needed one strip per set or per piece of wood and here I just um, figured out the spacing I wanted and as you can see here it's a nice stripe down the middle just to give it something a little bit different um, and now I was ready to get everything glued up made sure everything fit and there was no gaps and it was time to bring out the towel here just to protect my surface and I like to glue over the table saw because it's a super flat surface and I just use these bar clamps here. Um, I usually do tape up the end of them or the bottom of the bars, but I didn't here. Uh, but you always want to make sure that you have a safety piece of wood so it doesn't actually mark up your piece of wood. And then I went and glued each piece, made sure all sides were glued. It kind of looks like I'm making a cutting board here, um, but you want to make sure you have plenty of glue for everything, even though it is a coaster and it doesn't need to be super strong you just want to make sure everything sticks together nicely and doesn't split um, after wear of the liquid getting on the coasters so then I do it to the next one I'm gluing these together just so I don't have to use so many clamps it's really easy and it doesn't really affect the pieces of wood as they're being glued together but again make sure you have a bunch of glue um, on each piece now um, I'm just using some regular tight bond one because it doesn't again have to be super super strong because we are going to be putting some polyurethane on them so the um, waterproofness doesn't really matter and then here I'm just clamping them down and making sure I add another clamp to the top now if these were cutting boards I would obviously do another clamp that would sandwich the boards flat but for this instance it's fine and I just have three clamps and here's the glue up now as you can see there's lots of uh, squeeze out and I just smoothed that down so that there weren't so many drips so that this side I could actually put on the bottom while I plane it down and after about a day of glue up I finally could take them off and as you can see they got a little bit stuck because I didn't add that um, tape and on the bottom you can see there's lots of glue drips so make sure you do clean up your glue so it's not um, very difficult for you to clean up in the end after everything's dry um, now after this I uh, 
um, plane down to get the glue off a little bit and as you can see I'm sanding the tops off because I was going to uh, use my bandsaw to resaw um, and you'll see that in a second and I decided I couldn't do that because our bandsaw doesn't really resaw wood very well but I just wanted to sand down the grain a little bit so I could actually see what I'm working with and after that um, it was 80 grit and then I moved to 120 just to knock down um, the little planer bits from um, indents in the blade so as you can see here I'm measuring a little bit to find the center to resaw it but again it doesn't work out very well but you can do this definitely start out with a thicker stock and resaw which would give you twice as many um, as I get in the end here so I originally was going for 12 after resawing it but um, unfortunately as you can see here now I'm planing it and I will only end up getting six now I did get them down to maybe a quarter inch thick and that was because of after having to resaw it cut so deep into the wood now if I was do this again I would definitely go at least three eighths and max to maybe three quarters inch thick um, for these coasters just so that I have enough and they're a little bit thicker and more durable and they would look better in the end and then here again I'm sanding down all of the marks from our planer because we need to get some new um, planer blades but again these are super thin and once I add the chamfer on them they look a little thin so I definitely recommend going for a maximum amount of three quarters inch um, but overall I think they turned out pretty well um, just looking at the unfinished wood here now you don't have to treat these like um, cutting boards and then spray them after you sand them all I do is just sand them with 80 grit and then go to 120 and then wait to do 220 grit after I actually have them all in their square so I'm just gonna use my cross cut sled here to cut them to um, 3 inch square because again they're already 3 inch wide and um, as you can see I'm just measuring here with my cup to make sure that I have enough um, for three to go on each of the pieces that we've cut here now you can definitely use a chop saw to do this um, but I really just like using the cross cut sled I feel like the cut is way cleaner and as you can see here I already have three made and then I'm just going to measure exactly the same way I did before with the other piece of wood that we have cut so overall we got six um, coasters here and now I'm just going to use our router and use a chamfer bit and make sure um, it's not too much of a chamfer because again this is super thin as it is so um, again make sure you have a thicker coaster but overall these are just way lighter than normal coasters would be um, but again just make sure you do an easy chamfer don't go too slow because then you will burn the edges and I only did one side a lot of people do all sides even the corners going up and down but I like the look of just the top being chamfered and after that um, it was time to do a little bit of sanding again I wanted to hit it with 220 um, just top and bottom because I already sanded it down to 120 before and make sure you don't hit any of your chamfers with sanding because then you would mess it up and it wouldn't look so good so after that I applied some polyurethane this is just normal polyurethane that I got at Menards got a simple coat on and applied it to all of them and as you, as you can see it really makes the color pop on all of these especially the uh, maple in the middle with the stripe I think it's probably one of the best looking woods mixed together maple and walnut they just really accent each other and overall look very nice and give a nice product so I believe I did about two or three coats of um, brush on polyurethane uh, with a uh, paper towel but between every coat you want to make sure you sand it and I believe I just sanded it with 220 grit just to knock down the roughness a little bit so that in the end we will have a super soft and smooth product. So just sand it down and then again add a thin coat with, um, make sure you always have gloves on to protect your skin. Um, you can obviously use a spray on polyurethane. If I was doing a lot more of these I would definitely use my spray gun or even just a spray can polyurethane. Um, but I like the brush on, it, it just goes a little bit faster and there's less cleanup and again don't forget to sand and I don't sand the end product but I do sand again between each coat to make sure it is smooth and um, just brings out the grain a little bit more and this was my last um, paint on and so after final sanding 
I do a nice even coat of spray polyurethane just from the can just to give it um, a nice even shiny look instead of having all those um, wipe on looks and make sure you get all the corners including all the chamfers even the back and I do um, let this dry and then I always flip it over to do the other side which you'll see here in a second and even the bottoms look really really nice and finally I add these little rubber feet now I was gonna make the decision to cut out some uh, squares of cork to put on the bottom with my laser cutter but for this video I just added all these little rubber feet which makes sure that your coasters don't slide around when in use and after that I just give them one final spray with polyurethane alright guys so that is it I hope you enjoyed it I really liked showing you guys a simple project that didn't really uh, or is not really complicated and super simple that you could even do at your house um, or in your workshop so again here are what they look like they're super super nice let me focus it for you they're super clean and I really like how they turned out um, overall it was a super simple project and uh, didn't really take that long and again these will be listed on my Etsy shop down below in the description please go check it out if you're interested in anything I make I do also um, allow custom orders so just shoot me a message and I can definitely do that for you uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one